What uh, brought you to work at the Somerton Works? I originally got a job working for Decca Radar on the antenna test range, which in those days was at Holton Heath on the mainland. <coughs> and whilst I was there, I um, was involved in testing the various types of antenna that Decca made. Uh, many of them were m marine radars. And um, one day, uh, some designers from the Isle of Wight came down to test some of the antennas there. And they offered me a job in the design laboratory, which I accepted. So that's how I first came to the Isle of Wight. What did you feel about moving to the island? Was it an unknown quantity? It was very much an unknown quantity. Um, I had been offered a job by the uh, chief designer at uh, Davis Road, uh, Mr. Uh, Adam Schneider, um, but somehow moving to London, the London precincts, didn't really appeal, having lived in Dorset previously. And the offer to work on the Isle of Wight was great because basically still a rural area. So with some apprehension, uh, but nonetheless, we felt it was a move in the right direction. And I did say to my wife that when we go, we'll stay for four years and then we'll go back to the mainland. Well, 36 years later, um, I took retirement and then we went back to the mainland. <clears throat> so that period of time was all on the island but working for different companies? No. Um, I worked in the main for Plessy Radar or for Decca Radar as it started off before Plessy took over and then for uh, Siemens Plessy when Siemens took over and I had one break uh, where I uh, had a move to um, Templecombe where I worked for Plessy Marine for about three years and I worked there as a project manager but then um, the offer of another job came up here back on the island which was to run the MISA program. Um, that was an opportunity too good to miss. So we came back to the island then. And then I worked on the MISA program for seven years uh, until I took retirement. So was, the, was it more or less the same team still working at Somerton when you came back? Um, basically, a lot of people that I knew before were still here. Uh, there were some new faces. I'd only been gone about three years, so there hadn't been a tremendous amount of change. Because I'm interested in the impact the changing names of the companies had on life well, at Somerton. <clears throat> going back to those early days when uh, Siemens took over from, from Decker, uh, came as a bit of a shock because I think not many people seemed to, seemed to know that that was taking place. We did expect that there might be some changes to the better, because we felt, or I felt, that perhaps Plessy, being a very large company, would uh, invest more money, uh, because we always seemed to be working on, on a shoestring. Um, that eventually did happen, but not immediately. But I think we soon settled down to the fact that we were, were Plessy. The sort of philosophy of the firm, the outlook of the firm, was, was different, and probably over the next five or six years, gradually, uh, we did, if you like, become plessyised. Uh, I didn't find it a, a huge trauma myself, and I think really we coped quite well with the change. Um, well, where were you living at the, the time when you were working on the island? Um, our f well, we had several places. When we, we first uh, moved over to the island from uh, the Holton Heath side, uh, I lived. Um, in Winkle Street at Carbourne, we rented a cottage there because um, at that particular time there was a bit of a market slump and we had difficulty selling our property on the mainland. But when we did eventually sell, we bought a house at Parkhurst Road in Newport and we lived there for 17 years. Then we moved to God's Hill. Uh, and it was from God's Hill that we moved, when we moved to the mainland at Templecombe. And then when we came back, we lived in Brystone. 
and then I finished my time at Plessy when we were still living in Prester. The family loved the Isle of Wight. We brought our children out here and they still love the Isle of Wight. My eldest son comes back every opportunity he can. He's still got all his friends here. Did you notice a change in the comfort of commuting over the years? Oh yes, in the early days, going back, the uh, Isle of Wight ferry was a little bit primitive. And you couldn't get anything to eat. You'd get a cup of tea, perhaps, if you were lucky. And the ferries were very small, and they didn't run all that regularly, all that frequently. I think they sort of cut off at six in the evening. Mm. I was thinking actually of travelling around from home to work and back again. Um, it, over the years, did you notice this change in traffic? Did it become more of a chore? Well, as I said, we lived mostly in rural areas, so mm. I don't think traffic was ever really a main concern. Mm. Uh, even when we lived, worked on the mainland at Plessy, at Plessy Marine, uh, it was rural. So. Right. Um, we we never really had suffered any problems from that. Um, do you know how many people were working at Somerton while, at the time you were there? Or, or what about your, your, your particular department? <clears throat> well, I joined the microwave group, and when I first came to Somerton, the design laboratories were just a, a load of wooden huts, sheds basically. There were no main buildings. I think there was a factory building there of some sort. And it was over the next few years, perhaps 10 or 15 years or so, that the site began to develop at what we call Block 21, which finished up as the design lab. Um, we, we moved into that from the wooden huts. And we were, of course, rather pleased that we got somewhere decent to, to work, except that the roof leaked, as I remember. Um, Did you feel a bit like a pioneer? <laughs> Uh, at that time, not really, but when I think back on it, uh, then yes, probably. Uh, well, we... uh, was there much movement of personnel between the different companies on the island? Um, I've heard stories that people transferred from Westlands or J.S. White's. So... Um, I think there was quite a lot of that. I think perhaps many of the factory uh, staff probably came from engineering firms around the island. In terms of the design side, uh, I don't know that there was much expertise in that particular field on the island. Uh, there may have been a few um, engineers in electronics or so on, which uh, moved to uh, Decorator, as it was in those days. But I think most of the design engineers mostly came from, from the mainland. Did it feel as though there were two separate sections? There was a design section and a manufacturing section, or did it all kind of merge into one? Well, <clears throat> there were two different sections, but the whole ethos of um, Decker, and in particularly Plessy, when Plessy took over, was design for production. And everything we do had to be turned into a product, which had to go to the marketplace, it had to be sold in order to make money, to keep the company running. So, uh, although the two, one was called the design section, there was the factory, really, we were there only to get stuff into the factory. So from that respect, we tried to work as a unit. And I, in my job, I would very often go down onto the shop floor where they were building stuff that had been designed in my department uh, to make sure that any problems were being resolved. I've never, usually were a few problems that had to be resolved. Mm -hmm. So we did try to work together. Mm -hmm. There was occasionally a bit of mistrust between one to the other, but we did our best to try and break that down. Mm -hmm. It was good having the two next door to each other. Yes. Uh, so what was your daily routine? <clears throat> well, as a design engineer, um, I, would, I would be given a task to design particular items uh, in the microwave group. And so that would be the, uh, the responsible thing. Um, there would normally be prototypes of the devices that have been designed would be made in the model shop. Uh, the model shop was a set of highly skilled uh, engineers uh, who would actually manufacture the designs, um, sort of prototype designs. We'd have to test them. So we'd go through uh, a procedure of testing, look at the results, 
analysing his results, checking them against the design requirement, and if necessary, going back to the model shop and asking them to carry out modifications. So it would be largely um, a bit of paperwork, doing a few sums, uh, doing a few sketches, getting the items made, and then most of the time then spent carrying out detailed measurements of the items. The, the workforce was highly skilled wherever you went, both in the factory, the model shop, and in the design department. They were all particularly well crafted in, in their particular um, forms of expertise. So on a national level, the Somerton Works was an important um, asset to the country. Well, I should think so. There were not many radar companies around in those days. And it was as a result of some of the very early, early work that some rather uh, important extensions to design techniques uh, were made. So, yes, I would say that it was quite an important facility for the country. Um, what stands out most, best in your memory of working at something? Is there some special aspect that you enjoyed or was there well, something humorous? Oh, yeah, there that was, that was lots of humour. I think no matter where or how you work without humour, life would be pretty, pretty dull. And uh, there was always uh, quite a lot of jokes being played and, uh, and so on. And we used to invent silly games to play during lunch break and whatever. Um, but uh, I think comradeship was important and I think we used to work together as a, as a unit. And um, I think all of us, I think just about without exception, were really interested in the work that we did and we found it fascinating, challenging and very satisfying. And the social life? Um, yeah, we used to meet. Um, I had a particular circle of friends in Plessy, uh, within Decker Plessy, and we used to meet outside of work. And we would entertain each other at, at home and we'd go out. We would go and we would set up uh, matches together. We'd play bowls, we'd play table tennis. So there was, in fact, quite a good social life going on, as well as the uh, work. Um, I'm just thinking of the facilities at the works. Was there a canteen? Were there sports facilities? Yeah, the canteen was really quite good. I, um, most of us uh, would take the opportunity to use the canteen. Um, we had a sports and social club. And we had a, a cricket club, a football club. And we had a table tennis club. I think we had three or four teams in the various leagues in the, on the, the Isle of Wight uh, league system. And so, yes, we had you know, quite good facilities. So your sporting activities gave you contacts around the island? Um, yes, we used to play, of course, against um, uh, lots of the other uh, teams and groups on the island. And I remember as a table tennis player, um, I first met Carl Preen. Uh, he, he was the world champion, as you know. His father, I think, um, ran Columbia Products. And I remember he was 12 and I was probably 30. And I remember he thrashed me off the table and I wondered who he was and I found out later. Was there anything apart from radar sets manufacture that something? Yes, we used to do communications. But they were mostly microwave communications, so we were still in the high frequency end of, uh, of the spectrum. Uh, and we used to get involved in lasers and do um, work on optics as well. The, the main thrust, of course, was in, in radar. Uh, did working and manufacturing on an island pose any appreciable difficulties? Well, there was just the problem of um, transporting heavy radars from the site, or to and from the site, and, uh, and materials. Uh, the problem of having to go out to talk to other firms and companies, uh, customers that you deal with. So there was a, a, a travel problem, especially if you'd um, spent the day on the mainland and you were driving back to try and catch a six o'clock boat and you find you missed it by one minute. So there must have been something special about the site for it to continue in radar production for so many years with 
bearing in mind the difficulties of communication and transport? Well, I think probably that was because of the work that was done on the site. Uh, my understanding was that uh, Decca Radar came to the, to the island because of some form of incentivised deal from the government. And I think the government paid uh, towards the transfer from uh, the London area to the Isle of Wight. The idea was to give jobs to islanders, which I think worked very well. As I said, I think probably the, the factory was almost entirely staffed by probably island people. Uh, and eventually, of course, um, lots of design engineers who were born and bred on the Isle of Wight uh, came. We had uh, lots of graduates uh, who were born and bred on the island then come to work and stay on the island because of, uh, of Decker and Plessy. So you feel you've had a, a satisfying career? Well, I, I personally think I have because um, I started off as um, a laboratory technician on the mainland working on the antenna range and when I moved to the island I became uh, a design or a junior engineer and I personally have worked myself up from the laboratory technician to in the first place becoming head of microwave design and then eventually engineering manager. Mm. Um, the thing that amuses me rather a lot I think about it is that I did all that without any formal qualifications. I didn't go to university, though I did do a lot of studying at home. And when I was running the microwave group, one time I had a group of about 20 engineers working in the group. Uh, all of them, I think, were graduate engineers, including five PhDs. And I used to muse to myself, I haven't even got an O-level. Uh, yes, I found it very satisfying. <laughs> And you've enjoyed coming here today for the reunion? Oh, I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Seeing all the old faces and trying to remember their names. <laughs> Thanks very much. Is there any, anything else you'd like to add to the comments? Well, only to say that you know, it has been a wonderful experience working with all these wonderful people. Thanks very much for your contribution. It's my pleasure.